The last march we brought you the story of the Rosie Parks. The 58-year-old Skipjack is at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's where it's undergoing a complete restoration. Ten months later, Brian Spiros is back at the museum to get a look at the process being made and that's where we join Brian now at the Maritime Museum to find out how... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wow. Well, Jimmy and Lisa, I'm sure you guys will agree that the Skipjack Rosie Parks looks a lot different from the last time we first saw her. One of the biggest changes, of course, she now has a deck, which I'm standing on, and you'll see in just a moment. You know, a lot of other work still has to be done, but 2013 is expected to be an important year for the boat. Take a look. This is what the Rosie Parks looked like the last time you saw it. Basically, the shell of a ship being restored. Nearly a year has gone by, and this boat is taking shape quite literally. Just looking at this, you can see we've made an awful lot of progress. Pete Lesher is the chief curator for the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's. This is where the boat has been sitting since 1975. It was built by this man, Dorchester County native Bronza Parks. He built hundreds of boats in his time. But in 1958, his life was cut short after he was shot and killed during an argument. Oh, never. Not one little speck of it, I forget. I think about the emotions. I think about my mother. Mary Parks Harding is Bronza's daughter. We interviewed her last March. She and her family have been helping to restore the boat. One poignant moment during our last visit, this life-size cutout of Mary's father that sits near the Rosie Parks. What was it like for you when you saw this cutout of your father? Uh, it was a shock at first, but it looked so he looked so real that I just wanted to walk over and hug him. That was then, this is now. And the Rosie Parks is looking more and more like the skipjack it used to be. The cabin is the latest piece to be put onto the Rosie Parks. The old cabin, well, that's sitting not too far away. And what's even more noticeable, the decking. The decks are just gorgeous. A lot of labor, but they're they're what we call yacht laid decks, which is that they're the decks, the deck planks follow the curves of the, the side of the vessel. The Rosie Parks is being built the same way Bronza did it decades ago. All the craftsmanship and precision is once again being put into this boat. Shane Elliott is a shipwright's apprentice working on the project. He knows firsthand the work that goes into it all, especially when it comes to all the caulking and cotton work. You have to be able to feel it. You have to know how the mallet hits the iron and how much cotton is too much cotton. A former architect, Shane made a career change and went to wood and boat building school just last fall. It's been an an amazing opportunity because it's not only a great place to learn shipwright skills and continue my boat building education, but also to be actively part of a sort of a living link to history. And the history here goes well beyond restoring the boat. So you guys have some items here that belong to Bronza Parks. The family donated them to the museum. Explain what they are. Well, one is a broad axe, and this is just one of several tools, boat builders tools, uh, that Bronza Parks owned and used, uh, perhaps even in the building of this vessel. This is a, a campaign sign that uh, Bronza Parks mounted on the, the top of his car uh, driving around Dorchester County. He was campaigning for county commissioner, Dorchester County Commissioner, at the time that he was murdered. And, uh, and people say he almost certainly would have been elected. He was such a popular figure in the community. He was a pillar of the community. So when will the Rosie Parks end up back in the water? That will happen this October, but that doesn't mean the work will be finished. Launching is not the end of the project. So next fall, we'll have her in the water, but then we've got another six months of work uh, rigging her up and doing a lot of other finished work. Some of her iron work and that sort of thing will go on when she's already afloat. Pete says in the beginning, this project had its fair share of doubters. For many, she didn't look like she was worth saving but we knew what was there in terms of her story, in terms of her history. And all of that is coming back to the surface, proving what's old can become new again. 
back here now on the ground with a little bit of a different look of the boat. So you saw the decking and the cabin work that's been done up top. There's still a lot of work that has to be done. One of the big areas, of course, is in the hull of the boat. All under here, the wooden planks have to be put in. That has to be completed. We're told that that will start this summer. Now, as Chief Curator Pete Lesher just told you, the game plan is to have the Rosie Parks back in the water this October, this fall. A big crane's going to lift it up and place it not far from where we're standing, right back in the water. After that six months worth of work has to be done, but she'll be cruising back in the water, hopefully in the spring of 2014. That is the game plan. And of course, if you want to see the Rosie Parks up close and personal, you can do that. All you have to do is come to the Maritime Museum here in St. Michael's and you can come and get a look at her on a tour. It's certainly an impressive sight, certainly an impressive story, and we're going to continue to follow it. So with that said, Jimmy and Lisa will send it back to you guys in the studio. How neat. That's an incredible story. Love it staying is. with it too as it develops. Mm. That's terrific. Well, up next on The Marble Life, we are in the kitchen spicing it up a bit. Yeah, we'll share a recipe for Jamaican jerk chicken that won't destroy your diet. I'll be right back.